From the dawn of history to the present day, the problem of handling materials has vexed engineers and workmen alike. Building the Egyptian pyramids, moving the many ton stone blocks, taxed the ingenuity of the ancients. Crude machinery supplemented slave labor on the pyramids. The huge stone blocks were mounted on wooden rollers and lifted by means of slings and cranes. Building King Solomon's temple created another problem of moving materials. Heavy wooden beams hewn from the cedars of Lebanon, mortar and stone and precious metals. In the hanging gardens of Babylon, the problem of handling materials remained even after the structure was finished. A primitive hoist raised buckets of water to the gardens continually to keep the flowers blooming. Yes, from the ancient past down to the present, there have been machines to move materials. When high-speed production machines were first installed in factories, many industrialists thought their manufacturing problems had been solved. But these machines created many new problems. Manufacturers have found from costly experience that high-speed machines are only as efficient as the system which supplies them with materials and removes the completed work. In fact, research has proved that moving is 90% of making. Modern methods of manufacturing demand a continuous flow of production if they are to function at their highest level of efficiency and economy. This imposes a great burden on the equipment for handling materials and goods. The modern conveyor system, engineered to do a specific job, is the answer. Both flexible and efficient, it has contributed as much to industrial progress as has the machine tool itself. Low maintenance costs and low power consumption make the conveyor system one of the most economical methods of transporting production materials. For example, a three horsepower motor supplies sufficient power for an overhead conveyor over 1,000 feet long to carry 30 tons. Handling is non-productive work. The more hands released from the monotonous jobs of pushing and hauling, the more hands available for jobs requiring skill and training. No longer is it necessary for men to wear themselves out physically, dragging or pushing heavy loads from one floor to another, or loading and unloading trucks by hand. The modern conveyor system is a mechanical apparatus for moving material with the least possible expenditure of time. It puts products on the system at any desired point in the manufacturing process, carries these products from one machine or process to another, reroutes them between buildings, keeps the materials overhead when necessary, brings the articles down again where and when they are needed, and finally takes the completed assemblies to the loading dock. One of the most important contributions of the conveyor is in the field of processing operations. It relieves workmen by carrying out repetitive operations, such as dipping parts in paint. Without rehandling, it carries parts through high temperature drying ovens where the workman is unable to go. Again, in pickling operations where exact timing is essential to proper processing, a conveyor can be set up to give unvarying performance. Conveyors free valuable floor space by providing a system of moving storage. Thousands of parts move continuously in a cycle among the trusses of the building. Up here, out of the way, the wheels take up no expensive floor space, yet are available to workmen where and when needed. The conveyor line provides a workbench for mass assembly by bringing the work to the worker. Thus, it helps to eliminate the lost motion inherent in older manufacturing methods. No longer does the worker have to move about the plant or continually bend over and straighten up in order to get his work done. The conveyor acts as his work holder, keeping the material at just the proper height all the time. Large bodies of unskilled and semi-skilled workers are now enabled to work in planned unison and so produce an end product which few master craftsmen could accomplish were each man given the complete job to do. Closely allied with assembly are inspection operations. A well-engineered conveyor is constructed so that inspection is carried out at every vital point in the whole process. 
The conveyor system provides a steady movement or flow of goods from operation to operation along the assembly line. Coordination of production hinges on timing, getting materials to the point when and where they are needed. The green body is lowered onto the chassis with the green fenders exactly on schedule with the conveyorized production system. Because material flowing on a conveyor line must follow a definite path without deviation, inspection points can be worked out physically to ensure 100% coverage. The conveyor system makes it impossible to miss a step in inspection. Each part must be handled by the inspector before it can pass on to the next station. The conveyor makes it possible to study the operations of the men and arrange them for greatest efficiency. The individually engineered conveyor lowers production costs by placing the speed of production in the hands of management. Materials handling experience is as old as history. Out of it has come the modern conveyor. But the real job of the conveyor has only just begun. Every day, new industries are finding new uses for engineered handling systems. In fact, this establishing of a constant flow of work is the most vital contribution the conveyor system makes to mass production. Here, the leading edge of the B-17 wing is moved slowly through the assembly process on a slat-type conveyor. For fabrication, the skeleton tip is laid out and clamped to sturdy fixtures on an overhead trolley chain conveyor. The work is held at all times in the most convenient position for the men who assemble the frame and tack the skins. The wing tip is transferred to the tip final assembly line. Riveting is completed mechanical units installed, and inspections carried on. Meanwhile, the nacelle frame on a conveyor progresses through successive stages of riveting. Dipping or raising the conveyor line maintains the proper elevation for the workman. Hanging the nacelle in a vertical position permits the operator to stand inside the assembly itself for riveting. Since the outboard nacelles are larger than the inboard type, the operator rides with the conveyor, always at proper working height. The bulky frames are laid on long dollies attached to a drag line chain type conveyor, which proceeds at a uniform rate of speed. On the same conveyor, the wing proceeds through paint booths and drying. The wing is turned over for ease of assembly at various points along the line. When one side has been painted, two hoists located at the balance point raise the wing so that it may be turned over and lowered again to the conveyor to be carried to the final paint booth. The conveyor operates on a drag line on the floor which pulls the fixtures along. The fixture is supported above by ball bearing free trolleys. The wing reaches the final installation line. The flaps, ailerons, light landing gears, hydraulic equipment, electrical equipment and miscellaneous parts are installed and each unit is tested and checked before it is ready for painting and shipping. The magic of a steady flow of products to completion. Mechanical timing and coordination, which enables each crew to develop greater proficiency, to maintain a steady rhythm, which increases output. Conveyor equipment, which enables management to spot bottlenecks quickly, analyze operations thoroughly, and attain maximum production for man hours applied. The method which made the automobile, radio, and refrigerator available to all of us.